Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Jeevan. I'm a fourth, I'm a, no, I'm a fifth year medical student <laughs> studying in Poland. And if you'd like to know which Polish medical university I go to, as always, make sure to go and check out this video here. And today, we've got a very special guest, please. All right guys, so <laughs> my name is Arham. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. Super excited to be on Jeevan's channel over here today. So yeah, we're in a Kill this thing. <laughs> oh yeah, we Hopefully. are. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So in today's video, we are gonna compare the different things between a medical student in mm. Poland and a medical student in Oslo. Interesting. So uh, let's get straight into it. How to get into medical school in Norway. Okay, so starting off in Norway, the thing is, it's complicated, but at the same time, very simple. Simple in the sense that the only requirement to get into medical school is your GPA yep. from college. That's it. If you have a high enough GPA, you get into medical school. But it's complicated because if you don't have enough GPA, then you basically have to take your exams privately and improve your grades till you match the GPA. But the problem again is that then if you take up your exams privately after college, then you end up in a different quota, which requires even a higher GPA. Uh -huh. So things get get much harder, you know. Right. Yeah. And then you can get extra points for you know for your age or for serving in the military, uh, for taking up certain subjects. For example, taking chemistry or math gives you one extra point, you know, just by virtue of taking that subject. So even if I let's say get a very low score in math or physics, I still get one point because I just took that subject. So it's right. It's it's a bit complicated, yeah, but at the same yeah, yeah. time, the main idea is that you have to have enough GPA to get into medical school. In the right. Where about Poland? In Poland, it's basically you have to have biology, okay. chemistry. It depends on which medical university. Generally, you need biology, chemistry, and physics. All right. And to be honest, if you have a grade higher than a C, then you're like sort of accepted, mm -hmm. like into the into the application stage. And mm -hmm. then it's down to the interviews and the entrance exams. And the entrance exam. All right. And if you pass that, you're in. Tuition fees. So in Poland, it can be anywhere from eight thousand pounds up to thirteen thousand pounds per year, and that's just the tuition costs. And in Norway, uh, Norway actually you know the best part about actually living in Norway is that everybody is entitled to free education yeah, <laughs> from college from till university like from basically from your very yeah. first school day till you are university graduate everything is totally free actually you get a stipend as well you get paid like every month especially in college you get paid to go to college basically so, yeah yeah Wait, what? yeah that's not, uh, to college not not university oh but okay, actually okay. university as well. So in college, you are basically getting paid to go to college if you're, let's say, parents earn a, a below a certain limit. Okay. If you're a university student, then you can apply for okay. a student loan. Yeah. And then 40% of that loan is converted to a stipend, to a grant, if you clear all your exams every year. And then you, just, yeah, yeah. And then you only have like 60% of that loan to pay. But That's... again, since universities are free, you don't have to take that loan. It's, it's, it's not compulsory to take that loan. So types of classes, so. Hey guys, so the reason I'm interrupting this video is because for some reason I completely messed up my Answer. I don't know why I just got confused so I'm here to give a better one in Poland in our university we have three types of classes lectures tutorials and seminars lectures well I'm sure you know what, what a lecture is a tutorial is a class that has some sort of practical element to it so in the early years so for example like in anatomy or physiology or emergency medicine and so on a tutorial in those classes would be going to the anatomy lab and looking at all the different organs and muscles physiology tutorial would be like maybe you go and try out some different types of tests like spirometry and emergency medicine would be like going to the simulation center and doing CPR and stuff like that. And in the later years, tutorials are basically at the hospital where you go and do ward rounds, you see patients and look at different procedures and surgeries and so on. And the seminar is basically a mixture of a lecture and a tutorial together. So you have a teacher, you know, showing your presentation or something, but in the same time, you are also involved in some manner. So you also might do some practical element where they show you some things, some different types of tests, or you as students might give out a presentation. So yeah, now when Arham says his answer, You'll see at some point when he talks about the types of classes that they have, my face is a bit confused at the point when he says about seminars. It's because in my initial answer, I only said that there were lectures and tutorials and I didn't mention seminars at all. So at this point, when Arham was saying it, I was like, ah, okay, that's what I forgot. So yeah. Anyway. Back to you, Aaron. A lot of different stuff really. We have lectures, which are not compulsory. So yeah, we can turn them okay, into one to. second. Yeah. Lectures are compulsory. They are mandatory. Oh, you have okay. To oh, go right. To lectures. Okay. That is that's just annoying. Wouldn't you agree that imagine if your lectures were mandatory? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's also useful to just maybe not go to the lecture and do the lecture at home. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Actually, I stopped attending lectures. I don't attend le lectures anymore. I personally think it's a waste of time. Oh. It's not the most, you know, effective, useful thing, yeah. more effective way to learn, you know, just listen to a professor speaking for, for 45 minutes non-stop. So yeah, I don't attend lectures. So, and that I'm relieved to know that we don't have to attend lectures. It's not compulsory for us. Wow, for you guys, you're doomed. Damn, <laughs> damn yeah. <laughs>
Then we have seminars, uh, which are seminars are like there are lectures, but they're more interactive in the sense that we are that we are always presented with the case. And then let's say we are divided into breakout rooms on Zoom, and we discuss the case, and then we come back to the professor and we tell him whatever we you know think of the case. Then we have clinical rotations when you are in the clinical years. We'll get to that in a moment as well. And then we also have stuff like PBL, TBLs. It's like you are basically sitting in a group, and then you have to work with a certain case with your group without a teacher. PBL stands for problem based learning. TBL stands for team based. Learning, so something like that. Okay. Arrangement of topics. So mm. per batch, it depends. But in our batch, we had anatomy for the full year. We F had first year. First year. Oh, the whole of anatomy. Oh. Uh, we had oh, we had histology. We had cell biology. We had biochemistry. We had like we had like small subjects like physics and chemistry and no math. That's whatever. heavy, man. That's All heavy. of that in your first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had quite a lot. In my opinion, I feel like the subjects that we've been having are subjects that can be laid out in a way where over two or three yeah. years. Because everything is cramped in one year, mm. three, four big ones, Ooh. and then the rest are really, really small ones. Nuclear medicine and like, um, oh, I don't know, like radiology or something. I don't know. No, I wish we had that. We had, yeah. oh, well, we, we we had that during the COVID thing. Yeah, and yeah, that was yeah, really yeah. bad. I, I don't know the difference between, between an MRI and CT scan. <laughs> um, but. Um, no, nobody does, man. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. That's nobody good does. to know. That's yeah. good to know. I got something else. <laughs> But yeah, so how is it in... Yeah. yeah, I'm quite satisfied with the way we have our courses planned because in our first year we have, you know, the minor subjects like biochem, cell biology, some math statistics, community medicine, you know, basic stuff to get in, into the mood yeah, of, okay, you know, medical okay. school. All these small, smaller subjects. We also have some immunology towards the end of first year and we started with thorax anatomy at the end of first year. We don't have to take the exam, like, the final exam yet but we continue with anatomy and physiology and histology in the second year so our second year is mainly these three courses and then you have your exam at the end of the second year the first two years of medical school in Norway are the preclinical years yeah exactly and yeah. third, fourth, fifth, sixth these are the clinical years where you have like hospital rotations and, and when you said on second year we had anatomy, physiology, histology is it like together? you yeah. guys do it together? yep, yep. Oh, all together wow. so That's let's amazing. say let, let's say we are learning about GI physiology yeah. then at that time you're also learning about GI anatomy at the same time uh, that is so, so everything coincides but this effective. is amazing because I mean, it's, like, it's the heart right so we learn about the heart physiology and then the same day we can go to the anatomy lab and check out the heart and okay, oh, and you know associate what we learn in the lecture oh, so in physiology right, to the anatom anatomical structure oh, of the heart. Wow. So that's that works really well actually. Types of exams. Yeah. So in Poland we've got yeah, majority of the time it's MCTs. Uh same. There's maybe been like maybe three or four exams where we had to actually write like like written proper uh, like answers. You know? Yeah, exactly, but that's very rare. And all exams, yeah, again, it's just a few. I mean for example for pharmacology, every week we had like a test. Oh, okay. Uh, that would test uh, That's interesting thing. That's yeah. interesting. So we yeah. would have an oral exam in that. Yeah. It's just a five-minute oral, oral exam, but you know, it's everything in that topic you need to mm -hmm. know and you can ask any question yeah, in that yeah, topic. Yeah. But that's about it. No practical exams as of yet. Not even in the clinical years. Well, actually in the clinical... No, that's not true. I mean, in the clinical years, I mean, we've had like... No, not 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 proper exams like I know you guys do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nowhere near to that. It's okay. like maybe, okay, show me how to do this. Okay. Very basic yeah, things, yeah, yeah. but yeah. For us, it's like our written exams are mostly MCQs. Yeah. Like 90% of the exams are MCQs. Yeah. But then for like almost every single course, we also have an oral exam. And let's say we are talking about, I don't know, um, internal medicine, let's say. Then you would firstly also have, you would have a written exam, MCQs on that first. A couple of days later, you also have an oral exam, practical exam, where you, let's say you, you get a patient, you have a consultant doctor or an examiner sitting with there, and then you have to take the patient history, you have to examine the patient, you have to, you know, try and conclude what the diagnosis could be. So it's like a proper practical situation as well. Wow. When you're working as a doctor. And, and then is we for every subject? Uh, no, it depends. Yeah, Not really okay. every subject, no, but no, no, no. most clinical subjects. We have OSCEs yeah. as well, oh, like different stations. Yeah. Yeah. And is that once a year or? No, we don't have OSCEs every year. We had one OSCE at the end of second year and then we have another OSCE in our last final year. Yeah. Clinical rotations. Poland, we start practical training or you know, clinical stuff from third year. Unfortunately for us, because when we started internal medicine in third year, the second day we were going to go into the hospital, we were about to have a bunch of physical training. Okay. Everything from auscultation to palpation Whoa. And, and so on. Good stuff, but then the COVID hit. Ah. So everything went online and ah. that that was just That's not the same. Yeah. yeah. Now we do, even in fourth year, we do have clinical training. But again, the only problem about doing it in Poland is you can't get that real training compared to you guys because mm. you need to know the language. With the exactly. You know, that's the that's very really exactly. difficult thing. If you know the language, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, they will allow you to do everything. But the language is the biggest barrier. Yeah. Because you can't be in a totally independent, you know, student who has who's taking patient history. You need, or you always need to have a teacher who can translate for you, for example. Yeah, I, I get that point totally. But yeah, we, we are like 
lucky in that sense because everything is in Norwegian and we get a lot of practical training. For example, in our third year, when we're having internal medicine and surgery, we have like, you know, these uh, rotations at the emergency department. Every student has that, you know, so you have to write, you get patients at the emergency department and then you have to examine them, take their patient histories already from the third year, you know, and you are alone with the patient basically. And then once you are done with that, you present the case to a senior doctor and then they go over to that patient again, you know, because we just we can't trust us. Yeah, 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 of course. And then in the fifth year, we have like 12 weeks of actually no school, no university, 12 weeks of GP and hospital training. So you get assigned to a certain GP office where you work as an independent student doctor. Because in fifth year, we actually get our license as well. Oh, our, yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah. Uh, it's like a license where you, where you cannot prescribe class A drugs? No, yeah, exactly. You're basically working as a, as a substitute doctor. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you are yeah. meeting patients alone, but the seniors still have responsibility. They're still going through everything that you are doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Don't want to kill a patient. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know. Now, the next one is a bit of an odd one for him. Yeah, it sure okay. is. <laughs> For a lot of the subjects from first year, in order to get entered into the subject and hence to also write the exam, we have an entrance exam before starting the subject. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. So, for example, so you basically have an exam in the subject before you are taught the subject. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It makes no sense at all. Why would they do that? I don't know. I myself have asked. I have asked and they are like, it's... I don't think they have an answer either. No, it's, <laughs> it's part of regulation and yeah. it's the most absurd thing. And it's super scary. Imagine, I mean, imagine starting a subject and not knowing anything about it. And now some of the teachers can be nice. They can be like, okay, it's just about this bit of the hmm. GI track or whatever. But a lot of the time they're like, here's a book. I recommend this book for you and there we go. <laughs> Take the exam. But however, these entrance exams, they can be like, it can be like a three minute little, little MCQ thing or even like a 10 minute proper little test yeah, yeah, yeah. or like an oral thing. But still it's nerve wracking and it's... Yeah, yeah. And if you fail that exam, what happens then? Yeah, so I mean, because they're, they are actually very small exams or tests. Yes, yeah. So if you fail it, you can just do it again. Okay. Yeah. Fair but, enough, but still. But, but also, but for example, like it's a bit different with like anatomy and physiology. We had an exam for two weeks. So we start off with, with arm. So we will study on for two weeks, then have an exam. Uh, then you, but you have to pass the exam. Then the next uh, thing was, I think, thorax. Then you have two weeks for blah, blah. Okay. And you have to pass all of these anatomical exams. Once you pass them, then you can do the final exam. And then the final exam. All right, okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So that's also part of the entrance exam. Yeah. It's just sort of uh -huh. shifted differently. But yeah. That's now how it works for us. We don't even have these, you know, tests. We only have exams at the end of every semester. That's it. So when you are done with anatomy, that's when you have an exam in anatomy. When you're completely done in with physiology, that's when you have an exam in physiology. So yeah, you you can, you can basically just you know procrastinate till the end of the semester and just you, you know to, yeah. yeah if you want, but uh, that's obviously not a good thing to do. And 99.9 don't yeah, do that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, nobody does. I think both sides have pros and cons. Yeah, I agree. Scientific papers. Yeah. So in our university, it's not part of the curriculum okay. to graduate medical school with a scientific paper. Is it encouraged? It's not even encouraged. It's something that us medical students, when we reach third or fourth year, we just have our own thing of. I've heard that my friend yeah. has a paper. paper. I need to do it. So, yeah. and now in terms of opportunity to do a scientific paper, yes, you have mm. very much. The doctors are very much like, yeah, sure, join in. Join in. Very cool. So, how's it in Oslo? Yeah. Okay. So, there's no requirement as such for publishing a scientific paper. But, however, in order to clear your medical degree, you must pass this project thesis that you have to uh, submit in your fifth year, and you start writing the thesis in your third year. Some students actually take that exact thesis and convert that into a research paper as well, and get that published if they want to. Okay. And it could be basically anything you know topic of your choice you know ask what was your yeah mine is actually quite interesting because that's what i talk about on my channel as well my youtube channel study techniques memorization takes how our brain works so things that i already knew a lot of, a lot of stuff about i read a lot of literature about this stuff already so it took me like two weeks to get to get my paper done we start medical university in october okay and we end like june july and uh, we have three months of holiday summer mm -hmm. holiday but one month is taken up by mandatory hospital placement that has to be done okay. and per year it's different subjects. First right. year is nursing, second year is emergency medicine and family medicine mm. and stuff like that. And we have holidays, Christmas holidays oh. and Easter holidays and then a few little bank holidays. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, so basically we have two sessions for medicine. The first session is like the, the fall session right. which is from August till the next summer. Yeah. And then we have another session which is called the spring session which I am doing. The spring session from January till Christmas. So we basically Ooh. have um, our summer break approximately I think six weeks of summer six break. Weeks. And then we have our Easter break, our yeah. Christmas break, other uh, Christian holidays and 
different. Yeah. So we have one exam that I believe that covers well a lot of different subjects from medical school, and then we also have something called the LEC, and basically it's a licensing exam uh -huh. that when you do this, you then get the eligibility to work as a doctor in Poland, but also to be recognized as a doctor under European uh -huh. law. For Norway, you have basically four exams, four uh -huh. final exams. Two of them are written, and the other two are oral exams. Yeah. One is the OSCE, okay. and the other one is like a proper exam where you can, let's say, you can get a surgical patient or an internal medicine patient, and you know the entire drill, patient history, yeah. diagnosis, treatment, management, everything. That's hardcore. That's hardcore, but it really gives you this feeling of actually being a doctor. Okay, and like, I know this stuff now. If you pass the exam, you know that, okay, I got this. I'm yeah. not. I can do this. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's everything. So, Aaron, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure being here, uh, Jivan. Pleasure being here. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you're having fun in Oslo as well. Yeah, Honestly, guys, really, as I'm sure you guys have probably watched, well, you better have watched yeah. it. My whole Oslo series. And I love Oslo. Absolutely love Oslo. Have to come back. You, yeah, you must. Yeah, and hit me up when you're here next time as well. Definitely. If you've come till the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and as always i'll see you guys in the next video peace oh awesome, all right bud. just to sit here and yeah pretend talking because i can feel it behind the scenes you know, yes yeah yeah, yeah sure no worries all right awesome. perfect <laughs> the guys that Even just walked past <laughs>